Cape Chronicle, I'm Jacob McClellan. The Early Prevention Impacts Community Coalition, or EPIC, has a brand new program that connects at-risk youth with dogs. I'm joined now by EPIC's Shelly Wood and one of her friends. Shelly, thank you so much for coming by to talk with us. Thanks for having me. Well, first introduce us to, uh, introduce us to your friend that you brought with us today. This is Happy, and Happy is a part of the new program that we're gonna talk about today, EPIC Pals. Happy actually is a dog who belongs currently to the Safe Harbor Animal Sanctuary. It's a no-kill pet shelter um, out in Jackson. And Happy has already been through some training before he came to our program. He's a recent graduate of the Puppies for Parole program, uh, where he worked with um, one of the offenders in a um, correctional facility south of here for a while and achieved his canine good citizenship certificate. And when he got out, most of the dogs that go through the Puppies for Parole program, they have a 90 plus percent success rate as far as adoptions go, but Happy was not one of the fortunate dogs to get adopted right out of the program. But the day he got out of um, that program, he came into our program. Well, well, tell us a little bit of, of, about your program and uh, uh, how kids can become candidates for it and how some of these animals become candidates for this program. Sure, our program is called Epic Pals and uh, we're working with local at-risk youth currently. Um, and right now we've taken referrals for the program from the Cape Girardeau County Juvenile Office and also the local division of youth services, their aftercare program. So the kids that are in the program currently are coming from those those places. And the dogs who are in our program are right now from Safe Harbor Animal Sanctuary and also from the Bullinger County Stray Project. Uh, we're relying on the service providers from the Division of Youth Services and the Juvenile Office to, to select kids. They've selected kids they felt like were the best fit for this program that could benefit the most from it and contribute the most to it. Um, and then the dogs were relying on the, the shelters to tell us which dogs they think would be a good fit for the program. Well, what do kids learn through this program? The program has two components to it. It has a structured curriculum piece and then also a structured dog training component. So the curriculum is called Mudagrees and it is designed to teach social and emotional learning skills in young people. So these are skills like um, compassion and empathy, uh, decision-making skills. So the, chil the youth who are in the program spend a little bit of time, uh, two days a week, uh, working under the direction of a teacher, learning some of these skills through that Mudagrees curriculum. And then the other component, the dog training component, uh, we have contracted with a local dog trainer and she is actually teaching the youth practical skills how to train dogs. And so they're learning how to teach dogs some basic obedience commands like sit down, stay, walk on a loose leash, um, things of that nature. Well, tell us a, a little bit about that. Maybe walk us through one of the uh, one of the classes or something like that uh, uh, on, on a given day. Sure. Well, this is the first time we have ever done this program, so we're very excited about it, but it's definitely a learning experience for us, and we're in the early stages of it, uh, so we haven't progressed very far into the training piece of it yet, but the youth have been learning to teach the dogs sit and down and come currently, and the way that the class has been structured to this point is uh, when the training piece starts, we all sort of sit in a circle and the dogs go from person to person and they sort of get to know everybody and the other dogs. So it's great for socialization for the animals who are in the program. And the teacher, the trainer who's working with the youth is using all positive reinforcement techniques. And so when they teach the dog to sit, they'll take a, a treat and raise the treat over the dog's head until they back it into the sit position while giving the dog a, a hand signal. So at this point they're learning um, um, hand signals and how to use that positive reinforcement to uh, get the dogs to do the things that we're wanting them to do. Well, tell us a little bit about the about the skills that the kids will pick up through uh, through through learning dog training. Uh, so there will be the social and emotional learning skills that they will learn, we hope, and in the prevention world we consider these things protective factors, things that will protect young people from engaging in high risk behaviors like substance abuse. So they will be learning those sorts of skills, but they will also be learning the practical skills of how to train dogs. Um, we are also taking some of the youth, we're taking the youth who are in the program on various field trips. We recently visited the 
Humane Society of Southeast Missouri here in town, and we hope to uh, take the youth on trips to grooming facilities, help them learn how they skills that they might use later in life, career choices such as dog training or grooming or animal-related career choices that they could make. About, about how many kids are you are you working with now, and about how many dogs too? We're keeping the group really small. Um, we feel like that's going to be the most beneficial thing for for everybody involved. Uh, so we're working with five kids at a time and five dogs at a time. Where do, um, uh, has this been done elsewhere um, other than in Cape Girardeau? A similar things have been done elsewhere, but I don't know of anything exactly like we're doing happening anywhere besides right here. Uh, the Puppies for Parole program that I referenced earlier, there are a lot of prison programs and institutional programs where um, the folks are realizing the benefits of that human-animal interaction and they're bringing animals in and doing training programs. Uh, and then the Muddigree's curriculum that we're using is used in many places, but, um, but I don't know of it being used along with the dog training component. Um, tell us a, a little bit about um, where these dogs go after they, they, they go through this program. So the program is about a 10 to 12 week program and we've been successful. This is, as I mentioned earlier, the first time we've ever done this and we've been successful in securing foster homes for each of the five dogs who are in the program right now. Um, at least one of those dogs, we believe, has found its forever home already. So we're really excited about that. Uh, we will be actively looking for homes for the other four dogs and the youth who are in the program that's part of what they will be doing too is helping to try to get these animals adopted. The ones that are not adopted by the end of the program, we would hope that the fosters who have agreed to keep them in their homes would agree to keep them for a bit longer until we're able to find them a home. But if that doesn't happen, the animals will go back to the shelters where they came from. And how about Happy? Happy, like I said, is a dog of the Safe Harbor Animal mm -hmm. Sanctuary. Um, he is in a foster home right now. Happy is looking for his forever home. As you can see, he's a very laid back dog, great animal. Um, but at this time, at the end of the program, if he doesn't have a home, he will either stay with his foster if they agree to continue to provide a home for him or he will be he will go back to the shelter. And if folks are interested in, in adopting uh, Happy or one of the other dogs in your program, how who should they contact for something like that? If they're interested in adopting a dog that's in our program, they're more than welcome to contact uh, me and I can direct them to the shelter that has ownership of the dog and that's who they would have to go through their adoption process to adopt the dog. We've been talking today with Shelly Wood. She is a project coordinator for EPIC. Shelly, thank you so much for coming out to talk with us. Thanks for having us. Ahead, public art in Cape Girardeau. That's coming up on Cape Chronicle. can all be energy savers. Turn off lights. Use energy saving light bulbs. And turn off electronics and appliances when not in use. Learn what you can do today at energy.gov kids.